Transferring knowledge or know-how used to be a fashionable topic. It's not mentioned so much these days, but it's still important. We still need to know how to do it. So listen in to find out more. Transferring knowledge or know-how is a vitally important part of innovation. You should be doing it as part of your innovation activities, but many companies are employing outside um, external consultancies or external um, technology suppliers. And it's imp vitally important that you transfer know-how from these people within your company. Otherwise, you're going to create a lasting dependence that could go on for several years and cost you many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds. So there are many schemes, networks set up to do this. There are no, there have been in the past knowledge transfer networks. Some of them work, some of them don't. But this is just intended to be my view of an outline of a system that will allow innovation, know-how, uh, knowledge, behaviours, cultural aspects, cultural ideas to be transferred from a standalone or maybe a bolt-on innovation project and dissemin disseminated throughout a, a host organisation. I mean, knowledge can be thrown like a stone into a pond and the ripples then spread out at their own speed across the pond. This, this would be ideal. But organisations tend not to be quite as fluid as our metaphorical pond. But it is possible for knowledge, or know-how as I like to call it, to spread through the creation of varying groups um, that aren't just dissimilar to quality circles and action learning groups, but they do have some fundamental differences. And these differences are that they are not unique groups. You, there, will, there will be people who might be members of multiple groups that sit on one, two, three or, or more. These people are called boundary spanners and they provide overlap between the groups. They can multiply a little bit like human cells. If the need arises, they just multiply. There is, should be no one sitting above saying, well, this is too expensive in terms of time. We can't do this. If the need arises, these groups multiply. They are not confined to improving quality or modifying behaviours. They can be concerned with absolutely anything. Hence, they can be aligned to special interest groups. But they act as catalysts. They're not just suggestion boxes or talking shops on steroids. They're bi-directional. These metaphorical ripples can spread both ways. So instead of disseminating know-how, know-how can be sucked in. And importantly, they do not rely on technology. So how is this done? Well, minute data details are secret. I wouldn't want to give everything away, would I? But in a nutshell, select a number of innovation ambassadors and ensure that they have an appropriate balance of coaching, facilitation and action learning skills, as well as they know the latest strategic objectives of the organisation. Create a number of groups, call them what you like. I call them innovation action groups. And then spread those throughout the organisation, both geographically and functionally. I mean, this is just the seeding. These things can shut down, expand according to need and, and desire. Ensure that the composition of these groups is as wide and varied as possible. And give them one of your ambassadors, maybe as a leader or facilitator, they may not stay that way for long, but this is a great way of starting it off. Each should be seeded in some way with an initial idea or some knowledge for them to work on. These groups can then do things like work out the best way of spreading know-how in their own local context, create links with other groups that they feel necessary, combine existing knowledge to create new knowledge. They can capture ideas and they can use their own problem um, exploration uh, 
skills and problem solving skills. And they can create new groups and they can act as libraries of knowledge and resources. Of course, these things have to be catalogued so people should know where these bodies of knowledge exist. But the thing to note is that the entire system can be independent and completely devoid of technology, although it can enact as an enabler. Technology on its own cannot act as a knowledge transfer mechanism. So if anyone tries to sell you a computer system as a solution to your knowledge problems, then please run in the opposite direction. If you'd like to know any more, uh, want some handy hints, then please do get in touch. Bye for now.